So students, right here again. Today we got practice problems for section 7.2, ionic bonds and ionic compounds. First little group we're going to do, you need to be able to write the electron configurations for each pair. Yes. Yes. And then determine the ratio of the atoms in the ionic compound for each case. So we'll start off with our number. Five here. Start off with aluminum. Aluminum, look at the periodic table. We find neon as the noble gas before it, and then aluminum's in peri period three, and we find 3s2. Then we slide over into the p block, where it's the first element, so 3p1. So aluminum is going to need to lose three electrons to form its ion. It's going to lose those electrons. Then we have iron or fluorine, where we've got helium. That's a noble gas proceeding, and we move down into period 2, 2s2, and 2p5. This one's going to want to gain one electron, which is going to bring this one up to a 6, making it a complete sublevel, complete octet. Then we must balance out the gains and losses. So if we multiply this by 1, that means a loss of 3 electrons in total. This one, if we multiply it by 3, gives us a gain of 3 electrons. And the 1 and the 3 will be our ratio. So we've got 1 aluminum with 3 plus charge ion for every 3 fluoride ions. Back up here a bit. Every three fluoride ions. There we go. It's a similar problem again. As you're doing these, always try to do them on your own. Then back and check them. So lithium. Lithium, we're at helium as our preceding noble gas, N2S1. And with lithium we want to lose one electron. This goes away. Oxygen. Also, helium preceding it, and then we get a 2s2, and we move over into 2p, and we get the fourth one over. Here we're going to gain two electrons. Bring that up to a 6, completing it. So to balance them out, we're going to times 2, times 1. Results in a loss of two electrons, balancing out the gain of two electrons over here. So this is going to have two lithium with a one plus for every ions, for every one oxygen with a two minus ion, oxygen, oxide ion. Number seven, we got beryllium and selenium. Beryllium. We're going to have helium and then a 2s2. It's going to want to lose those two electrons. And then selenium starts with argon. And it's a 4s2. 
2, and this one moves into a 3D 10, and remembering the Ds are off by 1, and then 4P4. So this one's going to need to gain 2 electrons, bringing that one up to a 6. So they're already balanced out. Gains coloss. So it's one beryllium ion, which has a two plus charge. For every one not to write my word ion in there. For every one selenium with a two minus charge ion. That's a one to one ratio. Number eight. Gallium starts with argon and a 4s2 and 3d10 and we get over into the 4p and we're only the first one in depth. So it's wanting to lose three electrons. It's going to get rid of those and those and become a pseudo gas, pseudo noble gas notation. Sulfur starts with neon and 3s2 and 3p4. So this one's going to want to gain two electrons, bringing that up to a six. Balance them out, we're going to have to multiply by two and multiply by three, so we have a loss of six electrons and down here we've got a gain of six electrons. So our ratio is two of the gallium ions which have a three plus charge. For every three of the sulfur sulfide ions which have a two minus charge. Here, what we're essentially doing is figuring out the formula, but just a little different way of writing it. Yeah, number nine. We want to decide, is this a property of an ionic substance? Conducts electricity when solid. So... Ionic substances do not conduct electricity when solid. Do not conduct in solid form. So, then this cannot be an ionic substance. So this one is not ionic. Very likely it's probably a metal. Metals, solids that conduct. Conducts electricity when a liquid and has a low melting point. Key part here would be the low melting point. Ionic compounds have high melting points. And this thing is not Ionic. High boiling point and shatters when hammered. So both of these are properties of ionic. Both properties of ionic compounds. Meaning this thing is very likely a is very likely ionic. High melting point 
conducts electricity when dissolved. Again, both are properties of ionic compounds. And this thing is probably ionic also. Yeah, last little thing for section seven, two practice problems. Yeah, we're wanting to figure out which has the higher lattice energy. And the lattice energy is affected by two things. One is the charges, and one is the size of the ions. So in this case, everything here has either a one plus or a one minus charge. So the charge don't affect anything. But the size does. And if we compare the lithium ion is smaller in size the potassium ion from the second compound. The fluoride ion from the first compound is smaller than the bromide ion from the second compound. Oops, it's supposed to be a minus. So, things with smaller ions means smaller results in more lattice energy. So the one that has the higher lattice energy will be lithium fluoride. This one, we got sodium with a one plus charge. We got chloride with a one minus charge. And we have magnesium with a two plus charge. And sulfur with two minus charge. So we got higher charges over here. So that's an indication that one's probably going to be bigger. But if we also compare the size, both sodium and magnesium are similar size. Chlorine and sulfur are going to be similar size. Not a great difference in them. Because they're very close together on the periodic table. So the thing that overrides is these charges. So more ch higher charges means more energy. So magnesium, magnesium, magnesium sulfide has a greater lattice energy. And our last problem for this little part, we got magnesium oxide and rubidium iodide. So when we look at the charges, magnesium's a two plus, oxide's a two minus, rubidium is a one plus, and iodide is a one minus. So the bigger charges indicate this. Looks like it might be our answer. But if we compare the sizes, rubidium is going to be bigger than magnesium. Well, let's put a greater there for the size. And iodide is going to be bigger than oxygen. So in this, this one is both higher charge and smaller. So it's going to have a much greater lattice energy than the other one, so magnesium oxide. So that takes care of practice problem 7-2. If you have any questions, make sure you ask. That's all for now. Until next time, this is Stripe.